All right, so back to finishing the poster. This has no color holds on it. So I had made this new one in the last couple of videos where we are playing with the color holds and these, I call them diffusion textures, which you get from a dissolve layer, right? But what this one has that the other doesn't have is this layer of halftone dots that show the printing process in cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Now I can take that as is, and I can move one layer. You can do this in Photopea as well. You can move one layer into a new project. And then just line it up. And now I have the diffusion and I have the halftone dots. But the problem is my halftone dots have black hair, right? So the color hold kind of works because this is on a soft light blending. But if I put it on normal, you'll see all of that. This would be how it, how it prints really cheaply in a, in a newspaper, right? Like really big dots of just cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And it's slightly intentionally misregistered. So we're not getting beautiful roses, but it's definitely you know, it feels like hand printing, something like silkscreen printing. So what I like to do is to use soft light because that lets all of the, the black come through. So instead of normal mode, soft light's a good blender. And then you can just play with opacity for how much do you want that half tone color separation to affect your line art, right? So my color holds are still showing strong there, but I really like what it does in the duotones and how it helps round all of that out and how it separates things that are just dark from things that are solid black line art. So that's usually how I'll finish off my piece and even something just really basic like these blue pants can become, in detail, just lots and lots of interesting textures and colors together that I also know will print really well because it's based on CMYK separations. So we're not relying on any intense, like, fluorescent colors that can only show up on a screen and can't be physically printed professionally. So that's usually how I finish it up. And then it, it, you can only really see what it looks like when you're up close here or when you save it as a print-ready TIFF. So I think I like this more than I like it without it. But this, these are all just matters of personal taste. Because right? this is a little intentionally messier. And of course, I think what just bugs me is perfectly clean digital work. <laughs> when it's printed, because then you're noticing the paper texture a little too much. And this kind of takes control of it just by doing the, the halftone colors and layering them on top. It also breaks up the pink a little bit, softens the shadows. I can't mess up my print if I mess it up first. Exactly. That's a lot of it. Yeah. If you were going to do the same type of deal, but like for an edge around your poster, mm -hmm. So you can always rasterize a vector, and anything you can rasterize, you can output in channels as, as a half tone. Okay. So let me show you one technique. And I'm not, actually I've never checked if it's in photo P or not. Let's see, where would it even be in photo P? But there is a half tone filter option which is not nearly as good as doing it correctly. Oh, here we go. So under pixelate, there's a color halftone option. Here, there you go. Where did you find that? Uh, so it's under filter. Okay. And then it's under pixelate. Got it. And it's under color halftone. It's a little bit different in Photoshop. 
but it's a color halftone filter, right? Which will actually change your change your pixels. And these are kind of beautiful. They do not look at all like what they print. So this isn't to make things print ready. This is just to get that effect. But they'll use really whatever resolution you have. You know, they'll break everything into dots of different sizes and different separations. And so obviously, if I just do that to my flattened image like here, it really degrades the quality quite a bit. And here it has angles that are based on RGB color instead of CMYK, right? So what you'll see are the dots that are layered are red, uh, blue, and green. And when they, like blue and green, when they overlap, you get yellow because that's how the light primaries work. But you can play with how small the dot is. You know, you can have fun with it. What I would, what I would recommend is to do it as a copy. Ah, come on. Or just restart. <laughs> I have way too many tabs open, but I wanted to, to look at some of those, those links from your presentations. So remember, those are all there for you. But if I just take my JPEG, oh, here it is already open. If I just make a duplicate and then I run that filter on the duplicate, So filter, pixelate, color halftone. I do not teach you a lot of filters. I only teach you Gaussian blur because most filters are like a, an algorithm process that a designer has already built. So it's not like you're really having much control. But this one, you now understand where this is informed from. And then I can play with, I think the angles are fine. I was just going to play with slightly smaller dots. Well, because I made a duplicate and I'm now running the filter onto this duplicate layer, I can make it interact with the original. So this is at 100% normal mode. So I'm just seeing the halftone now. And you can see how it's really washed out. You can see the, the more effect you get because the computer is not great at, at visualizing. But to blend it, what I would do is play, just like I did in Photoshop, with soft light. And then all my line art would stay black, right? Instead of chunky, <laughs> like it does in the halftone. Ah. And then I would play with the opacity. So I decide how much to blend in that halftone pattern. So this is without it, this is with it. Yeah, but this isn't CMYK, this is RGB. But you can also change it to CMYK. I just don't think that will change the halftone filter to CMYK. So CMYK, this is RGB mode. That means this is the way the computer sees the image with red, green, and blue lights. So if you turn red lights on with green lights on, this is what you get. Because the higher the light is turned on, like in the white, the brighter it is. So then if I add blue lights turned on, I get full spectrum. The only place the lights are all turned off is in the black. That's RGB. If I change the image mode to CMYK, it's not able to actually change your channels in PhotoP. So PhotoP is not an adequate pre-professional print program. But what it does is it will limit your colors to what prints better with just cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So that's why the filter can't do it as well, because it's the computer sees in light, not, not pigment. But Photoshop can do it. Yeah, so I kind of like how that, how that mixes. But it also kind of deadens the color. And it's kind of hard to see how it looks because until I, I flatten it because of those Moria effects. But yeah, that's a filter you can play with. It, it can often, yeah, when you layer in anything, it's going to 
weaken any any uh, single color you have, right? If you fade green into pink, it's going to make it look grayer. So you have to balance all those things. And sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll up the saturation a little bit more. But I think this is pretty resolved. And so this is the one I'm going to save as a print-ready file. So to do that, I first save it as a PSD. Doesn't matter if it's CMYK mode or RGB mode for what we're printing. And then I'm going to flatten it after I've saved it as a PSD. And then all flattened, you're not going to get that moray effect anymore, but everything is in there. All the textures, as subtle as they might be, right? And now I'm going to save it as, or you would export it as out of PhotoP. Put PR in front of it, and as a TIFF. A flattened TIFF file with LZW compression. There it is. I like this one with the halftone dots better than this one without the halftone dots. And it's such a subtle distinction, right? But even from this distance, I can see there's a little bit of texture in the type that I like. But if I zoom in for you. So again, halftone is not something you're required to use, but it's something you're required to, to know about. So I'm going to print this one, right? But I can always save both, keep both, keep playing with options. Now, once I have my print ready file, here it is, then I'm going to put it to the class Dropbox into my folder under flatten TIFF files to print in digital art class files. And then that might be something I print for my final portfolio. And these posters also make a great addition to our student gallery shows because we can print them large format, you know, 16 by 20. And they showcase a lot of your digital taste and a lot of your digital skills if you're happy with it. So now I'm able to print that as well. And then I can always update it. Though I've put so much into this assignment, I can always put it into assignment six. Yeah, Avery. So, so you would need to, if you were going to have it professionally printed, on a not on a fine art printer. So this is kind of a print on demand setup. So RGB or CMYK worked fine for this because this has nine inks. It's trying to, to match everything. But if you were going to print like a thousand copies of it on a lithograph press or you're doing it for a client that's doing like a brochure, you know, for conventions or something, they need it to be in CMYK and you need to make sure all your colors work well that way because that's how it's going to be printed. Now they're going to use a lot finer dots, <laughs> you know. I can see those dots in like a textbook and a poster and anything that's printed, but I need a magnifying glass to see them. I made the dots really clear for the aesthetic of it, yeah. So that's, that's with CMYK, that's with color holds. Now I can finally post my finished one. If I save it as a JPEG, that is all those things, all those special effects with color holds and CMYK, not on its own, but blended in with soft light <laughs> blending mode. And of course, there are just so many variations you can play with. That's something I like to do. So I'm now going to output this. Is this the one? No, I was doing out of Photoshop. So that's the TIFF. So now I'll just save that. That's the print ready TIFF. Save it as a JPEG just to put into Canvas.